Hi, welcome to another Engineering Mechanics video tutorial. In this example, I'll demonstrate finding the resultant of three forces which act on a bracket. So before we start uh, solving the problem, let's consider uh, the situation. So we have some forces, F1 up here, cable connected to this bracket, force 2 directed over here, and we've got a little triangle here, 5, 12, 13, triangle to indicate the direction, and a force here, F3, at 36 kilonewtons, acting clockwise 30 degrees from the x-axis. So in this problem, we want to know what the resultant force of these three uh, cable forces will be on the bracket. Uh, this is actually just the start of a real problem. Um, so knowing what the resultant force is in here, for example, is interesting, um, but its practical application is, um, you know, if we're designing this bracket, we want to know what the sizes of these bolts need to be. Um, and in order to do that, uh, we need to find out what the resultant force is. So this is just the first part of a real problem. So first, let's consider what our solution method will be. We could do it graphically by um, adding all of the forces tip to tail um, and using trigonometry as we've done previously, but that gets a bit cumbersome with more than two forces. So the method that we'll use here is the method of addition of scalar components. So first off, we'll find all of the uh, scalar components in the x direction or the x components and we'll just look at each force in turn. So first off we'll look at the force F1. Whenever we're using um, scalar components, X and Y components, it's important to indicate uh, what the X and Y directions are. So in this case it's actually defined in, in the problem. Uh, we've got X and Y directions already indicated so we don't need to specify that again. And then looking at uh, the component of F1 in the x-direction, um, our orthogonal component. So again, draw a line um, from the tip of the force F1 um, perpendicular to x, and that gives us our orthogonal component F1x. Okay, so we have a uh, right angle triangle here, so we can use our um, sine and cos relationships uh, so our length or magnitude of our component F1x will be the length of this line here. So that will be just, if I can use sine 40 degrees to give us this line. Uh, also, you could, if you feel more comfortable with making this uh, 50 and saying that F1x is equal to F1 um, cos 50, uh, I've used the the angle that's indicated here, so in this case we have F1x is equal to 15 sine 40, which is 9.642 newtons. Okay, so next up we'll look at the force F2. This time the direction of the force is given by uh, the ratio of this uh, little triangle here, 5, 12, 13. So the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared will be uh, 13. Uh, so you can, if you like, work out what this angle is and use sine and cos of the angle, uh, but we can actually just use those ratios. Um, so we draw our um, component here, F2x, uh, same as we did before, and then we can use um, the ratio here. So the ratio of this component F2x to the force F2 will be 5, uh, sorry, 12 thirteenths uh, times 26. And it's in the negative x direction, so it's negative, so we have F2 x component is minus 24 newtons. Okay, so now we'll look at the force uh, component in the x direction of, F, of F3 and do the sim similar thing again, um, and this time we've got uh, an angle of 30 degrees in here, so F1x will be, uh, sorry, F3x uh, will be F3 cos 30 degrees. So we can 
write that in and we get 31.18 newtons. So we add them all up to get FR uh, and we see that the resultant force uh, in the X direction uh, is 16.82. So we need, still need to do the Y components. So let's um, go on and do that. So dealing with F1 first again, uh, F, uh, F1Y will be here. So that will be 15 cos 40 degrees. Okay, so it's the adjacent side to this angle here. So we'll now look at um, F2Y. And we can use the ratio of that uh, little triangle again. So this time, uh, the length of this side here relative to this side of the triangle will be 5 thirteenths. So our force F2Y will be 5 thirteenths of uh, F2. And we see that as 10 newtons. So next looking at F3, we have F3Y down here. Uh, so the length of this side, so that will be F3 uh, sine 30. Okay, so we put that in. Uh, and again, we note uh, that this is in the negative direction. So that will be minus 18. And we add them all up and we get 3.49 for the Y component of the resultant force. And uh, I note that I haven't included, included the, uh, the units here. It's good practice to always indicate the units that you're working with. Um, in fact, that's not newtons at all. Let's go back. It's actually kilonewtons. So we'll just put that in just so we know what our units are that we're working with. Okay, so now that we have our um, components in the X and Y direction of our resultant force, we can put those down and now we need to make use of uh, Pythagoras theorem uh, to work out our resultant of those two components. So if you put those on the X and Y axis again, so we have FRX and FRY, we need to combine those to get um, our resultant force. So so firstly, if we just write the, um, the resultant force in Cartesian vector notation, we have the resultant force FR is 16.8 times the unit vector I, which indicates the X direction, plus 3.49 times the unit vector J, which indicates the Y direction. And if we want to uh, calculate the magnitude and direction of that resultant force, uh, as I already mentioned, we can then go and use Pythagoras theorem. So drawn on our diagram here, the resultant uh, and the angle that it makes with the x-axis. And from square root of some of the squares of the sides, we can put that in to find the resultant force magnitude equals 17.2 kilonewtons. And the angle is the inverse tan or a tan of the opposite over adjacent, so FRY over FRX. And that gives us an angle of 11.7 degrees. And we just indicate the direction with a little diagram uh, next to our answer. That, that angle refers to anti-clockwise relative to the x-axis. Okay, so that's it. I hope this was helpful to you for um, your learning of engineering mechanics and how to find the resultant of multiple vectors. Thanks. Bye.